Hello, I'm Antonio Mora. This is the News and News.com Day in Brief. Today's top stories in four minutes. It's Tuesday, September 25th at about 8 p.m. The Kavanaugh Circus, and I don't mean that in a good way, took more twists and turns today. Republicans seem to be firming up their support for his confirmation even before anyone testifies about the recent accusations. GOP leaders said they are planning to move ahead with a Judiciary Committee vote on Friday, and President Trump is no longer holding back, calling the allegations against Kavanaugh a con game and saying the second accuser was all messed up. But it's not clear everyone's on board. One of the iffy Republican votes, Alaska's Lisa Murkowski, said that an FBI investigation would clear up all the questions. That's what Democrats have called for. In order to avoid a repeat of what happened with Anita Hill, the GOP has hired a yet unnamed female attorney to question the first accuser. Some Democrats have also stopped holding back, talking not only of defeating Kavanaugh, but later stopping any Republican nomination until after the 2020 election. That assumes they'll win a majority in the Senate in this year's midterms. That would be the next step in our increasingly noxious tit-for-tat politics, revenge for Republicans refusing to even hold hearings on President Obama's nominee, Merrick Garland. But the Democrats would have easily blocked Kavanaugh if they hadn't used the so-called nuclear option in 2013 that dropped the number of votes needed to stop a filibuster. Both sides need to be aware that there are serious consequences to the lack of civility in our politics and for the lack of respect they've shown to the traditions of the American system. Talking about tradition, if any of you had any doubt that Trump had broken with establishment Republicans, his speech at the UN General Assembly should have laid those doubts to rest. The speech was isolationist, and in it, Trump ripped into multinational organizations in what he called the ideology of globalism. Once again, a Trump speech left people shaking their heads about what is going on at the White House. What kind of advisors would allow the president to go before the UN and give a speech hyperbolically touting his achievements in a way reminiscent of his political rallies? Delegates actually laughed twice and at him, not with him. Francis Emmanuel Macron rebuked Trump's isolationism and nationalism, calling for greater multilateralism, and strongly criticized Trump actions on Iran, climate change, and the Palestinians. So much for the bromance. Trump and Iranian President Rouhani traded threats and insults from the UN podium, with Rouhani saying Trump suffers from weakness of intellect. Trump's national security advisor, John Bolton, was even tougher on Iran, saying there will be hell to pay if Iran's aggression continues, adding, quote, we will come after you. Meanwhile, Bill Cosby was sentenced to three to ten years in a state correctional institution for sexual assault. The judge said Cosby fit the definition of a sexually violent predator. Cosby's conviction, taking him from America's dad and beloved comedian to rapist, has to be one of the most terrible falls from grace in U.S. history. Today's step toward making America a worse place comes courtesy of a group called Smash Racism DC. It posted videos of protesters hounding Senator Ted Cruz and his wife Heidi from a restaurant in Washington. The group demanded to know how he'd vote on Kavanaugh and posted on Twitter that fascists aren't welcome. Clearly, these prosecutors aren't smart enough to know that they're the ones behaving like fascists. While they celebrate their Pyrrhic victory, they might want to think about what would happen if candidates they supported were also not allowed to go to restaurants. We already have an issue getting good people to run for office. Their actions likely also backfired because they probably made reasonable people more inclined to sympathize with Cruz. And how do you criticize Trump for coarsening the national dialogue when even Cruz's opponent for his Texas Senate seat, Beto O'Rourke, weighed in saying the protesters' behavior wasn't right and that the Cruz family should be treated with respect? Unfortunately, respect is not a concept understood by hyperpartisans on either side of the political spectrum. In our Daily Alternate Universe segment, the great divide between liberal and conservative media reflected the great divide between regular conservatives and liberals when it came to how they perceived the Fox News interview of Kavanaugh and his wife. Conservatives are increasingly outraged at what they see as a political hit job on the nominee. Watching the interview, they saw an honest public servant who deserves to be confirmed and who should not have had his name dragged through the mud. Liberals, outraged by what they believe is a rigged process, tended to attack parts of the interview, ridiculing the comments Kavanaugh made about being a virgin. 
Again, the discourse entered the land of the ridiculous, with some pundits actually defending Bill Clinton, somehow implying that women's accusations against him pre- and post-White House were somehow less significant than those against Kavanaugh. Huh? We have all those stories and much more updated around the clock seven days a week on newsandnews.com where you will find all you need to know in one place. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking on the right of your screen just below this video. Please follow us on Facebook at Real News and News and follow me on Twitter at AmoraTV. I'll see you again tomorrow.